Fantastic. Hello, hello. Hello, Pat. Hello, Glynis. Hello. Welcome to my channel. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for coming to my ESKI channel. <laughs> ESKI, in case you're wondering what that stands for. It stands for empowering, sharing, connecting, informing, and engaging. So I started the channel a couple of years ago because I wanted to share my journey with a, a particular point in my life where I was having some struggles with my health. But as there's much more to Simone than her health, I decided that I also wanted to use that platform for other um, ways and means of connecting with people and sharing interesting stories. Which brings me rather nicely to my two lovely guests who I have here with me today. And we're going to be talking about an anthology series that we're all a part of called Navigating Life. And it's a book anthology. We are all book authors and have contributed to not just one, two books, which are going to be launched on the 31st of July. So make a note in your diaries. Please save that date, the 31st of July. Patsy and Glynis are both authors and have contributed beautifully to that anthology series. And they're here today to share a little bit about that journey and give us just a snippet of um, what that entailed. And um, so without further ado, we're gonna go straight into it. I will start with you, Glynis. Um, I know you're a minister's wife, uh, grandmother, and you're in the health sector. Do you wanna share just a little bit more about who Glynis is? Okay, so yes, um, I am in the health sector because traditionally my career was in the field of nursing. I, however, left that traditional field as a health visitor and went on to do other things. But more recently, I am in the health sector working in communities, working as a health coach in communities and uh, just helping people, be it in the church setting or in general community setting, how to regulate their life, how to get better out of their life. And I'm working uh, in a very holistic way, focusing on mainly physical, mental, um, financial, and spiritual health and well-being. Fantastic, thank you, Patsy. I know that um, you're also in the health sector and um, you're involved heavily in the plasma donation, sorry, plasma donor um, industry. Do you want to tell us just a little bit more about what you do and who Patsy is? Okay, yes. Um, my name is Patsy and um, I work for the NHS. I work in the um, plasma donor center. We, during the pandemic, we... Um, collected convalescent plasma. And that means we collected plasma from donors who had been infected with COVID. So we were basically taking the plasma from them to um, get the antibodies to give back to people who were really ill in intensive care. Um, they didn't think that worked. So they were now um, collecting plasma for medicine that makes auto a medication for autoimmune diseases. Um, and I am an ordained minister as well. And, um, you know, I'm come to share my story yes. and how I got involved with Evolve. Yeah, takes me nicely on to my second point. So how did you get involved with Evolve? Well, um, I normally work weekends and there was one weekend I wasn't working and my daughter said, Mom, why don't you come and join the meeting and have a listen. So I, I, when I came on that particular day, it was another nurse that was actually on and she shared some really, you know, important information that was a blessing to me. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed what I was hearing. So I began to listen every week I was there listening and, you know, everybody was contributing and Claudine, such an inspiration, you know, I think I'm older than her, but I was thinking, I just want to be like her, you know, so um, 
yeah, that's how I got involved. And that's where I heard about the Evolve. Amazing. Glynis, how did you get involved with Evolve? For Evolve, I know Claudine from before, about four years ago, I did a business course with her. Mm -hmm. And I suppose talking to her off and on over the years, but when we were visited by COVID, the beginning of 2020, uh, I saw that she put out that she was gonna be doing this Evolve um, journey for 12 weeks. And I thought, well, it felt so boring and so terrifying back then in March, April of last year that at least I would be doing something positive because I know Claudine and the character of Claudine that she's very positive and uplifting. So I thought, well, it, you know, I can't, that can't be a bad thing to get involved with mm, right. for 12 weeks. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> 16 months later, right? That's right. <laughs> Testament to the fact that it's just been a, an amazing platform. But Glynis, tell me, what actually inspired you to get involved with the Navigating Life anthology series? Um, it really was, in the end, it was waking one morning to, this, to a voice that said, it's not about me. I have been prompted by different people, different places and different times to write about my journey. And I have constantly, firmly rejected the idea. And I woke one morning after um, hearing Claudine put this out on the Evolve platform um, to a voice that said, it is not about you. And you have no right to be withholding what you have learned in this period of time when there are so many people that are going through extreme loss and just the, you know, the terrifying feeling that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. So I yielded to be obedient at this time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Patsy, can I ask you the same question? What inspired you to get involved with the Navigating Life Anthology series? Well, as um, Glynis said, when Claudette, Claudine um, announced it on the Evolve platform, a sentence she said, what jumped out at me was that everybody's got a story to tell. And I was thinking, I haven't got a story. No, that's not for me. And for about two or three weeks, they kept announcing this, everyone's got a story to tell. And they, I think a meeting at the end of the, um, the session on a Saturday morning, I'd never go into it because I haven't got a story to tell. And then there was and maybe the fourth week, I said to my daughter, I'm gonna do this. And she said, you should mom. And I said, but I don't have a story. And I didn't have a story. And I panicked because I haven't got a story. And I um, subscribed to it and became now really fearful that I don't have a story. I have agreed to become an author without a story. How can that be? And that's what happened to me. And I prayed and I, I had to pray. I said, God, what do you want me to tell the people? What is it? Because what I wanted to say is not actually what I wrote about. I prayed and I said, God, you need to give me the story. Tell me, should I write about this? Should I write about that? But if I write about that, there's going to be too many words. God, what shall I write about? And that's how my story was birthed. Wow. And what was the most challenging in that part of you deciding to write your story? putting the words together, um, the thought process around it, I didn't know, I didn't even know how to start it. I didn't know about the beginning. I didn't know about the middle. I didn't know about the end. How am I gonna tell this story so it's concise? I've only got ex um, so much words to write. How am I gonna write this? And I just got fearful. I just, fear crept up in me. And then I kept hearing what was helpful was other um, ladies on the platform were talking about this fear. And I thought, oh, it's not only me. Mm -hmm. So that was my challenge. This fear wall came up in front of me and I thought it was only me, mm -hmm. but there were other ladies and I felt more comfortable. Yeah. Everyone hearing their, their, their fear stories. Yeah, yeah. The fellow inspirators, right? Yes. So are you able to give us just a little snippet of the story? Just to, you know, tease our viewers a little bit. Okay, so it was how my 
father found out that I was pregnant because myself, I'm the youngest of seven mm -hmm. and um, he expected so much of me given that my two elder sisters both had teenage pregnancies, he was not looking for that from me. I was an A, A, A plus student at school. This is not what he was expecting from me. And he, we both share the same initial, like, and this, I went to the maternity hospital on my own. And when they sent the response, they sent it on an envelope that just said L Grant. His name is L Grant. There was no Mr. There was no Miss. So he naturally, I was still at school. So he opened the letter and I came home from school and the letter was standing portrait on the mantelpiece. And I walked in and I saw Liverpool Maternity Hospital and I backed out and went to my room just waiting for the call. And that was, that was it. Okay. And I was 16. Okay. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> We just have to read about it. That's right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Glynis, Glynis, um, what, what, what was it that you found most challenging in your journey, writing your story? Um, my story is about going through the dread of having my 21-year-old son's death investigated as a murder and uh, then getting lost for a good 15 years in the turmoil of that pain um, because there is no clear cause of death. I have lived a life of questioning all the time, everybody, um, without an answer. And uh, the thought of writing that terrified me because it is a deep hole that I don't even know how I got out of. Mm -hmm. So the thought of writing that me means that I had to go back there and I um, just didn't know how I could do that. In the end, it was that I used a tool <coughs> that I could speak my experience and that turned my words into writing. But if I had to put pen to paper, I don't think I could have done it because my thought was, what, what do I say? Yeah. Words fail. And that's something I learned early in this, that words failed me to be able to communicate communicate anything around this. The feeling was just too much. And words almost felt like an insult. So that was the biggest thing for me, to be able to get the words somewhere that can be written. Words felt like an insult. <coughs> Excuse me. Those are powerful words. That's quite deep, actually. Excuse me, this is this is. And I mean, if anyone <clears throat> had said to you at the time, Glynis, that you will be sharing your story with the world, as painful and as raw as it was back then, what would you have said to them? <clears throat> well, I have rejected it constantly for the past years. My son died in 1999. And constantly people have said to me, Glynis, you should write about this. And I have constantly said no and being horrified even at the thought and wondered why would I do that? Why, why would I do that? It's not gonna, how do I benefit from that? Um, and even with people saying to me, it will help others. I just thought, well, yeah, but my loss is different to your loss. So how, how does that help you? It just didn't make sense. Again, maybe the words, it just didn't make sense mm. that I would open up this horror and that anything in there could benefit anybody. So I would have continued as I did when I first heard Claudine mention about it. I just thought, hell no, not me at all. That's what I said when I heard it. For, uh -uh, I'm don't, don't bother come at me again. I'm not doing that. And as I said, it's when I woke up the morning and had this voice tell me, 
madam, it is not about you. I thought, oh, I'm so sorry. I am yeah. so sorry. Yeah, it was a kind of Damascus moment, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes. Right. Patsy, I mean, I can't imagine a young teenager, you're the apple of your dad's eye. I can only imagine that I know what it's like having that close bond with your dad and just wanting to do everything to please them. Mm -hmm. Going through all the emotions, the disappointments you're sensing from your parents and this whole new world now of becoming a young mother. If anyone had said back then you would be sharing this story with the entire world, what would you have said to them? I would have said to them, what story? I just, I, I, I was seeing it so much around me, young girls having babies. I just didn't see it as a story. I just thought, thought it was a way of life. Young girls were, you know, doing what they shouldn't be doing. You know, somebody told me that it's because you was forced right, whatever that means, you know, and <laughs> that's what they'd say. But, um, you know, I didn't think that I had a story to tell, not until I realized that, you know, there are so many youngsters, even, you know, young boys, young girls out there today that are sexually active long before they should be. Mm -hmm. And I realized that in this pandemic, we're going to see, you know, because I believe that we're going to see a lot of COVID pandemic babies coming along. And it's a story where, you know, we need to not let them go, keep a hold of them. Don't let them go wayward. Don't let them go astray. Keep hold of them because there's still a future in them. There's still destiny in them, you know, and God can also ordain their steps just as he ordained mine because I did become, I, I, I am a qualified nurse and it was by the grace of God Charlene is who she is. She's into um, HR management. She sings, she's a singer songwriter, mm -hmm. you know, she designs websites. Um, she can play instrument. She does so much. Mm -hmm. So even though it was not meant to be, there is still a destiny for the mother and for the child. It's not the end. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it can just be the beginning. Absolutely. And the interesting thing as well, it's such a relevant topic because I mean, more so now in this day and age where um, sexualization is so rife, it's, it's all over, it's, it's so commonplace, it's so readily available and accessible, especially through social media. I mean, if I had young children growing up now, I, I don't know how I'd be able to navigate that whole terrain where it's just there. You can't police them, you know, 100% of the time. No. But it, it's available. Once they're out of your, your home, they go to school and what have you, there's no determining what's going to happen. So Absolutely. how do you get the message out there that um, actually, you know, this is life and this is what can happen, but this is how you can come through it. Yes. By sharing your story like you have done, which is fantastic. And what you probably don't realize is that in so doing, it has made you um, into this beacon of hope. Patsy, because they may well be other young women, young men going through the same thing, because um, it takes two at the end of the day, right? We That's sometimes me. tend to focus mainly on the women. Um, they're going through the same thing. So if there was one key message that you wanted to give to your readers, what would that be? Whatever you're going through at the moment, might feel like a storm, but don't stay in the storm, keep walking because, you know, there is sunshine at the end of that storm. As long as you keep walking and you don't get stuck, don't get stuck in your situation. There's so much opportunities out there. So many, you know, resources out there that can help you. You might think I'm on my own, I'm alone. Maybe your parents might have even thrown you out. There are resources, there is help out there, but you know, a message to the mothers, a message to the grandparents, a message to the fathers, don't let go of your child. Keep hold of them, no matter the situation they're in, keep, hope, keep hold of them because there is hope. You know, they can become something in the end. They just need guidance. Beautiful. 
And I like that, hope, that four letter word, because without hope, we have nothing. That That's is right. what keeps us going. So no matter how That's negative the situation, you know, we've, we've just got to hold on to that. That's right. That's powerful. Glynis, I mean, your story was patently painful and mm -hmm. the way you've been able to turn that negative situation around into a positive that's now made you this ambassador for hope. If you were to give one message to your readers, what would that be? For all my years of being connected with church and, and learning about God and reading the Bible, None of that helped me to deal with that. I could quote, but none of it helped me. Until I got to the place of starting a personal relationship with God. I said, hey, God, you see all of that stuff that I've learned about you? Do not let anybody come and tell me anything about any of that, because I will turn them away. I do not want to hear. You made me. I am still here. I have gone through this. The two of us need to need to do this. Mm. You need to talk to me in a way that you know that I can hear you, that I can understand you. Other than that, I'm just basically waiting to die because this is just not on. And uh, getting to that place, I would say, was my starting. And I would say that as I look at people who have lost since that, so much of the traditional things I've learned in doing counseling and all of those sorts of stuff. No. Relationship with God transverses that and puts you in a completely different class. And it is in that class mm -hmm. that I started to go through a process that has allowed me to get to a place where I have reframed the loss. Because again, another waking moment was, but oh wait, I still have a son. I'm still the mother of a son. Mm. So with that came the realization that it's how I engage it. Mm. How I engage that whole period. That is, is, and that is what I would say to people. It's that you can't do it before you're ready to do it. But at the point that you are able to be ready, let me put it that way, yeah. that it's about reframing the situation. Reframing your mindset. That's beautiful. I like that. And you talk about, you know, your relationship with God as well. I think that's the foundation that, you know, really starts to kind of springboard you to the next level. That's so true. If there was any advice that you're going to give, Glynis, to somebody who's also wanting to share their story and maybe don't know where to start or they're hearing all those negative voices in their heads, what would you, what would your advice be? Sometimes we don't know where to start. I think we're human, we're just a little bit, you know, just, just a little thing, but God really does know it all. And, and I think sometimes we need to just hand it to him. Say, listen, I have this to do here. I don't know what to do. I don't know how, I don't know where, here. And earnestly hand it over. And when we hand it over, we are amazed. We are just amazed because he just ticks so many boxes that we're left with looking back thinking, wow, you really are clever. <laughs> so that's what I would say, just give it. Literally give it to him. Let go, let God. Love it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just it. give it to him. Patsy, if you were to, if you found yourself in that position where somebody is debating, questioning themselves, they feel they have a story, they don't feel they have a story, <laughs> but they just feel this urge to share, but they don't know how to start, where to start, what would your one piece of advice be to them? Same as what um, Glynis has said, give it to God, ask God, because he knew, he knows your beginning. He was the one that created you. So he knows what your destiny is. And as long as you ask, the Bible said, if we don't ask, we don't receive. So you have to ask God, why, what, what is my purpose here? Ask him, you know, 
you, your answer will come in the least expect place where you think it is. You'll just be sitting mm -hmm. there and you'll get a download. Mm -hmm. And that would be your story. You might get a man of God might speak a word to you and oh, that could be my story. Your story can come from any direction. As I, um, you know, uh, a few years ago, a man of God, he's a good friend of mine, told me that I had a book inside of me. And I said, book? I haven't, I haven't got no story to tell. And it's not till I started now with the Navigating Life Anthology that I realized this is the beginning of this book. And, you know, it's still, I still wasn't even connecting the dots together. It's not until I posted the first, um, the first presentation of the book with the little rip cover that I saw a message in my inbox, this is God. Then it, then it dawned on me, this is the book that he'd been speaking about a few years ago. This is actually the beginning of the next book that's going to come out of me because I am going to write another one. Fantastic. That's when the penny dropped, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm intrigued by that. I mean, the fact that there you were just being this obedient servant, just literally following the yellow brick road, if you like, but mm -hmm. the dots were there and you weren't even joining them. Yeah. No, at all. It wasn't until a few days ago that suddenly it dawned. Yeah. Out. Powerful. It's absolutely powerful. I mean, my next question, Pat, you've partly answered it, but um, what next for you? What's next on the agenda? Well, um, I know that Claudine has mentioned that, you know, we're going to start like a master class or something to help people who want to further, you know, and become authors, but they don't really know their way around it. Me, I'll be one of the first to enlist into that because I need that help. So yes, that is my next thing. I want to become an established author and whatever door God wants to open for me because of this, because I don't think it's going to stop here. Mm. I think this is just the beginning. Absolutely. Even for you, Glynis, I just think it is just the beginning doors are going to fly open wide and I avail myself for him to use. I'm available for the master's use. So whatever God says, I'm here available. Amen. And that's just Amen. it. It's just about um, ensuring that you're ready for that call, right? And yeah. you're already there at the firing line. So onwards and upwards. Glynis, Amen. what is next on the agenda for you? What's next on the agenda is um, to keep trying to be obedient and do as he prompts me to do. Because things come and I'm always thinking, what? I don't want, what about? And things are just coming. So I find myself in over the past few weeks with these things that I used to look at thinking it was just bits and pieces. And I know I'm seeing them. It's almost like when I was looking at them, they were seeds. And now I'm looking at them, I'm seeing plants. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. So the book, as I wrote the book, as fearful as I was, I have actually felt that there was a whole book in there. I was just grateful to get to the end of that chapter and put it aside. But I walked away from it being very much aware that the feeling that was in me as I was doing it was that there was more. So... Wow. Yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna focus on trying to be obedient. I'm very good at being disobedient. <laughs> I'm telling him no. I'm yeah, gonna just try to focus on being obedient. That, that in itself is a bit of a challenge, right? When you're so used <laughs> to being a certain way, and now suddenly realizing that actually that way hasn't worked, and <laughs> I need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. Right? I need to be a bit more open and obedient. And just yes. follow. follow fantastic well hopefully we have managed to share just enough information um about this navigating life anthology series which book series which has been launched on the 31st of july it'll be an online event and details will be shared forthwith keep your eyes peeled for more information will be coming your way very soon but i will be including information down below in the link so that you can see the details of when the anthology um, launch will be taking place just as a reminder and also if you would like to connect with 
Patsy and Glynis via social media. They will be sharing some details with me, which will also be included in the link below. So do feel free to get in touch. Follow them on social media because, guys, you know, this is just the beginning. <laughs> like a bow and arrow, they are about to be launched so fast and so furiously. You don't want to miss the next chapter in their journeys. So stay tuned. And I hope that what we have shared with you today has been a blessing. But I hope even more so that when you do get a copy of the books, which we'll be sharing information about in very, very, um, in due course, in a very short period of time, you will be able to hopefully glean and get some nuggets from the various stories. Patsy, Glynis and myself were one of 29 authors who have bared their souls and shared their stories um, about difficult and traumatic periods in their lives, in our lives, where we have gone through the valley but the most important thing is that we came out of the valley. And hopefully when you get to read our stories, it will inspire you, motivate you and be a blessing to you. So all that leaves me to do and say now is to thank you so much, Patsy and Glynis for joining me on my platform on the SQ channel. And um, I hope it's been a blessing for you. I hope- uh, Thank you for having me. It's gone well today. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, that will be it for now. I will, um, yes, all it leaves me to say is stay blessed, guys, stay tuned, and we shall be seeing you very soon. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.